Hi, my name is Sinan Jaffe and I've been at the Ion Study Center, the CCA, for the month of September. And I'm doing research for an issue of Cabinet Magazine, uh, which I'm the editor, uh, on the theme of bubbles. And part of what we'd like to investigate in that issue is uh, the relationship between bubble structures of various kinds and architecture. And as part of the research, I've also been putting together a small show here, uh, which is going to be part of the Starting From series. And that show will be um, on exhibit in November of this year. So what we're going to do is show you some of the objects and some of the uh, material from the archives that's going to end up in the show. So the show is going to be in three vitrines um, at the CCA. And so we have picked up three little themes, as it were, uh, related to bubbles. And each vitrine will highlight one of these themes. Between the vitrines there will also be some other elements. And then on a wall um, behind the vitrines, there will be a fourth element, uh, which we'll show you in a second, which is uh, all related to Gordon Maddox Clark's um, um, interest in balloons. So we're going to start with this particular item. Um, and this is a student drawing by James Sterling from, we think, we're not 100% sure, 1949. We know he's a fourth year student at the University of Liverpool. And this particular vitrine, which will include this, this um, drawing, is meant to highlight the notion of the uh, bubble as an isolating uh, structure. So the notion of the boy in the bubble, etc., would all come into this particular vitrine. And the bubble is something that um, closes you off from other human beings, possibly, or certainly other forms of um, sociality. And so this particular drawing is a forest ranger's lookout station, and he is um, very high up as uh, is needed for something like this, but it also seems to be in an incredibly inaccessible place. There are little steps here, but um, these rocks, these very aggressive uh, outcroppings of rocks seem to make it very impossible for him to get in or out. A helicopter, in fact, might be needed to rescue him from his own station, but you're not sure where the helicopter would land. And so this is, um, this is one moment that we'd like very much for this particular vitrine. Um, there are some other things that are going to go into that vitrine, and um, they're going to end with a series of snow domes that the CCA has, and um, we'd like to have each one of these vitrines have a little moment which, um, or two even, that deflates the particular rhetoric and tradition of the, uh, the bubble and the dome and the sphere in architecture. So for this particular vitrine, we're going to also borrow um, a little snow dome made by the artists uh, Martin and Munoz, who are New York-based artists, that shows Humpty Dumpty um, sitting, this is a snow globe, uh, shows him sitting on a wall looking very despondent, possibly about to jump. And so we have a kind of double bubble structure there in that particular item. Um, some other things that we're going to have in this particular one, uh, there's a fantastic manuscript by Hans von Schiele, uh, which is a manuscript, um, um, it's a book on fortification and it's from the 16th century, late 16th century. And so that's the kind of item that we're going to highlight in this particular vitrine uh, of the bubble as an, isolating, um, as an isolating form. A second vitrine is going to um, look at inflatables and pneumatic structures more explicitly. And for that, we have a number of things. Um, we have, for example, these beautiful prints from the 1930s, anonymous photographer, Germany. And um, these show you various kinds of um, zeppelins being constructed in the warehouse, in the in the uh, in the uh, hangar, and then coming out here. And um, some of the other things we're interested in looking at is how this particular history of pneumatic structures and inflatables just handed down through the 60s. And so, for example, we have um, Ant Farm's Inflator Cookbook, which is a seminal book from the from 1971. Um, which is in the library collection. That's going to be shown here as well. And we have uh, the June 1968 issue of uh, AD, which is dedicated to the new world. This is a bad pun that comes up a few times in various publications, new PNEU world. And for that particular issue, which is very interesting, um, they invited the editors of um, uh, the, the, the architects who work with Utopie, which is a magazine, but also a, a, a collective 
uh, from France to come and do uh, an intervention in the magazine. But already you see a lot of the debates around the kind of utopian and dystopian nature of inflatables showing up there. And um, the whole series, this particular vitrine is going to end with Peter Sloterdijk, the German philosopher's inflatable parliament, which is a scheme that he proposed a few years ago in the context of a show in Germany where um, he proposed a, um, uh, an entire autonomous structure that could be dropped from an airplane, an American airplane, onto parts of the world that need democracy. And this particular parliament would then um, open up, inflate, expand, and be in a totally self-enclosed environment where the citizens of that particular country in dire need of democracy will be able to come into this and um, um, have all the apparatus for a democratic structure for their country there. Uh, that was a very ironic proposal and we'd like to include that, as I say, you know, we'd like to have some moments in every vitrine that undermine some of the rhetoric um, that the vitrine itself has shown, shown uh, historically. Um, this is another element that's going to be in that vitrine, and also one that's uh, mock heroic in some funny way. And this is a um, this is from Cedric Price's uh, collection here, which is one of the uh, you know one of the prominent collections that's here of the CCA. And these are balloons that were made for a talk that he gave at Rice University. And for that particular talk they made these balloons which have a drawing on them of Cedric Price's own face. Perhaps we can take a quick look at this. And it's a drawing that he himself made and he apparently used quite an often. And uh, this is a cleaned up version of the, of the caricature he made of himself. And we're going to uh, inflate one of these and have it uh, in the vitrine um, there. So this will be there as well. And then between this vitrine and the next vitrine, we're going to have another Cedric Price item. And that is this. And this is an audio tape of the very lecture at Rice University that we just discussed there. So we're going to digitize that and hopefully include it in the show between the two vitrines. The third vitrine is going to look at um, the history of the sphere um, by looking at how persistent it's been um, through time and how many different uses it's had uh, it's been good for in some sense uh, within different ideologies and different perspectives and it's going to bring in some books for example from the 17th century uh, for example the CCA library has the first edition of Kepler's uh, Harmonies of the World and also um, there's a first edition here of uh, Robert Flood's big book uh, and his uh, cosmology. And there we see the uses of spheres in various ways there. And this, however, this separate price um, item is going to provide us with the motto, as it were, for this third between. And uh, for the generator project, he has this particular um, sphere, uh, which you'll see in the images, and it says the symbol, any size, only one shape. And that's sort of, in some sense, what the vitrine is about. This one shape showing up again and again in various, um, uh, in various guises, uh, in various projects. Um, other things that we're going to have in this vitrine, other than the Kepler and the Flood, which I mentioned, are um, the CCA has a very strong collection of toys. And so we're going to have one item from Foible's um, gift system. Foible was the inventor of kindergarten in the early um, 19th century, and they have here, uh, amongst many other things, his second gift, which are three um, uh, three solids, one of which is a sphere, which he thought was the most important and elemental shape. And children were taught to be creative and explore themselves and the world by handling various kinds of objects. The first one they were given uh, was a sphere, and the second one was the three that you will see in the show here. A number of things from the very strong collection on World's Fairs uh, that are here at the uh, CCA. And we have, for example, let me use the spatula. We have, for example, this incredible image from the 1939 World's Fair 
uh, and that's the Perisphere, which was the highlight of the 1939 World's Fair, and it's a photograph by Samuel Gotcho. And we're going to have not just dramatic images from the World's Fair, but also the kinds of souvenirs and tchotchkes that were produced uh, in part in order to um, show the, the infinite appeal of these particular forms, but in part also to deflate some of the rhetoric that images like this set up um, around, around the sphere. And so there's a salt and pepper shaker in the collection, which is going to be displayed along with another souvenir made out of metal that are going to be juxtaposed with this particular one. Um, this was for a, um, um, for a center, uh, for a cultural center, basically. And one of the things he was very worried about was um, the door. And so um, the idea that he finally came up with was that this dome would be raised to allow people in, and then it would close. And once it was closed, no one could leave or enter. So if you were late for the performance, for example, you couldn't get in. And here is uh, a diagram with the dome closed. And one of the things that we really like about this picture, uh, this particular uh, drawing, is that the dome has been closed, and there seem to be two people here, perhaps a third person here, uh, who are waiting now for the performance. And the performance seems to be a three, um, have room for three musicians on stage, so we have a one-to-one -one ratio of uh, musicians and audience in this particular one. These are letters that Matta Clark wrote to a number of ballooning associations and ballooning experts for a project that he was working on where he wanted to suspend uh, from a tether balloon uh, a kind of a tent structure. And Matta Clark was very interested in subterranean spaces and had made films in New York City around the subterranean spaces, but he was also very interested in elevation. And he'd done a number of projects that elevated people uh, in, into trees, for example, etc. And Matta Clark is a fantastic letter writer. Um, he never writes the same letter twice, even if he's asking for the exact same thing. So it's very interesting to look at his letters and see the ways in which he changes descriptions of his own project and what he is doing. So looking at these letters side by side, I think it's very interesting. Um, he and his brother were both atrocious spellers, and that's kind of another uh, feature of these. But they're very interesting because this is the kind of, um, he's trying to explain his work to uh, a group of people who are not in the arts community and he's trying to explain to them what it is that he does. And, um, and he gets correspondence back from many of them who are willing to help him out in various ways. And um, it's a very kind of um, technical set of questions that he has, but they show you the kind of range of concerns that he had and how those technical questions feed into larger artistic um, uh, issues and dilemmas he was working on. So these are some of the elements that are in play for the show. Um, we haven't finalized the selection yet, but these are the ideas that we're playing with and some of the items uh, from the collection. The show will be on view at the CCA in November, and the issue of Cabinet on Bubbles will be going to press um, at the end of January, and the first issues will be available in March.